In a narration found in Sahih Muslim number 196, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, advised that Islam is sincerity towards Allah, the Exalted, his book, meaning the Holy Quran, to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to the leaders of society and to the general public. Sincerity towards Allah, the Exalted, includes fulfilling all the duties given by him in the form of commands and prohibitions solely for his pleasure. As confirmed in a narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number one, all will be judged by their intention. So if one is not sincere towards Allah, the Exalted, when performing good deeds they will gain no reward in this world or in the next. In fact, according to a narration found in Jami Atimiz, number 3154, those who performed insincere deeds will be told on Judgment Day to seek their reward from those who they acted for, which will not be possible. Chapter 98 al Bayna, verse 5 And they were not commanded except to worship Allah, being sincere to Him in religion. If one is lax in fulfilling their duties towards Allah, the Exalted, it proves a lack of sincerity. Therefore, they should sincerely repent and struggle to fulfill them all. It is important to bear in mind Allah, the Exalted, never burdens one with duties they cannot perform or handle. Chapter 2 Al-Baqarah, verse 286 Allah does not charge a soul, except with that within its capacity. Being sincere towards Allah, the Exalted, means that one should always choose his pleasure over the pleasure of themselves and others. A Muslim should always give priority to those actions which are for the sake of Allah, the Exalted, over all else. One should love others and dislike their sins for the sake of Allah, the Exalted, and not for the sake of their own desires. When they help others or refuse to take part in sins, it should be for the sake of Allah, the Exalted. The one who adopts this mentality has perfected their faith. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4681. An aspect of being sincere to Allah, the Exalted, is to trust that his decrees and choices are best for the people involved, even if the wisdoms behind his decrees are not obvious to people. Chapter 2 Al-Baqarah, verse 216 But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. To only be pleased with the decrees that suit one's desires, and become upset at the decrees which contradict one's desires, is clear insincerity to Allah, the Exalted. The one who maintains sincere obedience of Allah, the Exalted, by fulfilling his commands, refraining from his prohibitions, and by facing destiny with patience according to the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, through every situation and state is truly the sincere one. Sincerity towards the Holy Quran includes having deep respect and love for the words of Allah, the Exalted. This sincerity is proven when one fulfills the three aspects of the Holy Quran. The first is to recite it correctly and regularly. The second is to understand its teachings through a reliable source and teacher. The final aspect is to act on the teachings of the Holy Quran with the aim of pleasing Allah, the Exalted. The sincere Muslim gives priority to acting on its teachings over acting on their desires which contradict the Holy Quran. Modeling one's character on the Holy Quran is the sign of true sincerity towards the Book of Allah, the Exalted. This is the tradition of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, which is confirmed in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 1342. An aspect of being sincere to the Holy Quran is to approach it with the sincere intention of understanding and acting on all of it, irrespective if one's desires are contradicted by the Holy Quran. The one who cheery picks which commands, prohibitions and advice to follow and ignore based on their whims has adopted insincerity towards it, and they will not therefore truly benefit from its guidance. Chapter 17 Al-Isra, verse 82 And we send down of the Quran that which is healing and mercy for the believers, but it does not increase the wrongdoers except in loss. Finally, it is important to understand that even though the Holy Quran is a cure for worldly problems, a Muslim should not only use it for this purpose. Meaning, they should not only recite it in order to fix their worldly problems thereby, treating the Holy Quran like a tool which is removed during a difficulty and then placed back in a toolbox. The main function of the Holy Quran is to guide one to the hereafter safely. 
Neglecting this main function and only using it to fix one's worldly problems is not correct as it contradicts the behavior of a true Muslim. It is like the one who purchases a car with many different accessories, yet it possesses no engine. Behaving in this manner is showing insincerity towards it. The next thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion is sincerity towards the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. This includes striving to acquire knowledge in order to act on his traditions. These traditions include the ones related to Allah, the exalted, in the form of worship and his blessed noble character towards the creation. Chapter 68 al kalam verse 4 And indeed you are of a great moral character. It includes to accept his commands and prohibitions at all times. This has been made a duty by Allah, the exalted. Chapter 59 al hash verse 7 And whatever the messenger has given you, take and what he has forbidden you, refrain from. Sincerity includes to give priority to his traditions over the actions of anyone else, as all paths to Allah, the exalted, are closed except the path of the holy prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Chapter 3 Ali Imran, verse 31 Say, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. If you should love Allah then follow me, so Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. One must love all those who supported him during his life and after his passing, whether they are from his family or his companions, may Allah be pleased with them all. Supporting those who walk on his path and teach his traditions is a duty on those who desire to be sincere to him. Sincerity also includes loving those who love him and disliking those who criticize him irrespective of one's relationship with these people. This is all summarized in a single narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 16. It advises that a person cannot have true faith until they love Allah, the Exalted, and the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, more than the entire creation. This love must be shown through actions not just words. It is an aspect of being sincere to him, to respect, love and practically follow him. But this is not possible to do without learning about his blessed life and teachings. How can one respect, love and follow someone they do not even know? The one who claims to love and respect him, but fails to practically follow him, is insincere in their claim. The next thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion is being sincere to the leaders of the community and includes showing sincerity to the religious leaders and teachers. This includes kindly offering them the best advice and supporting them in their good decisions by any means necessary, such as financial or physical help. According to a narration found in Imam Malik's Mawata, Book number 56, narration number 20. Fulfilling this duty pleases Allah, the Exalted. Chapter 4 and Nisa, verse 59. O you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those in authority among you. This makes it clear that it is a duty to obey the leaders of society. But it is important to note, this obedience is a duty as long as one does not disobey Allah, the Exalted. There is no obedience to the creation if it leads to the disobedience of the Creator. In cases like this, revolting against leaders should be avoided as it only leads to the harm of innocent people. Instead, the leaders should be gently advised good and forbidden evil according to the teachings of Islam. One should advise others to act accordingly and always supplicate for the leaders to remain on the correct path. If the leaders remain straight, the general public will remain straight also. To be deceitful towards the leaders is a sign of hypocrisy, which one must avoid at all times. Sincerity also includes striving to obey them in matters which unite society on good and warning against anything which causes disruption in society. There is no blind loyalty to leaders in Islam, only obedience to them in things which please Allah, the Exalted. The final thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion is sincerity towards the general public. This includes desiring the best for them at all times and showing this through one's words and actions. It includes advising others to do good, forbidding them from evil, to be merciful and kind to others at all times. This can be summed up by a single narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 170. It warns that one cannot be a true believer until they love for others what they desire for themselves. Being sincere to people is so important that according to the narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 57, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, 
peace and blessings be upon him. Place this duty next to establishing the obligatory prayer and donating the obligatory charity. From this narration alone, one can understand its importance, as it has been placed with two vital obligatory duties. It is a part of sincerity towards people, that one is pleased when they are happy and sad, whenever they are grieved, as long as their attitude does not contradict the teachings of Islam. A high level of sincerity includes one going to extreme limits to make the lives of others better, even if this puts themselves in difficulty. For example, one may sacrifice purchasing certain things in order to donate the wealth to the needy. Desiring and striving to always unite people on good is a part of sincerity towards others. Whereas, dividing others is a characteristic of the devil. Chapter 17 Al-Isra, verse 53. Satan certainly seeks to sow discord among them. One way of uniting people is to veil the faults of others and advise them privately against sins. The one who ACTS in this way will have their sins veiled by Allah, the Exalted. This is confirmed in a narration found in Jami, Atimiz, number 1426. Whenever possible, one should advise and teach the aspects of religion and the important aspects of the world to others, so that both their worldly and religious lives improve. A proof of one's sincerity to others is that they support them in their absence, for example, from the slander of others. Turning away from others and only worrying about oneself is not the attitude of a Muslim. In fact, this is how most animals behave. Even if one cannot change the whole society, they can still be sincere in helping those in their life, such as their relatives and friends. Simply put, one must treat others how they desire people to treat them. Chapter 28 al Qasas, verse 77. And do good as Allah has done good to you. An aspect of being sincere to others is aiding them in order to please Allah, the Exalted. One should not desire gratitude from people, as this destroys one's reward and is clear insincerity to Allah, the Exalted, and people. Over 400 free ebooks, audiobooks, infographics, podcasts, and blogs available on our website, www.shakepod.com.